Hey everybody, Carl Schuf here from Snorkel.tv and I'm pleased to uh, present to you the results of my peacock challenge. Now if you remember, I presented to the community a little interactive peacock that would open its wings and close them when you clicked on it. So it was a basic toggle of a sequenced animation. Now I'd offered this challenge up to the community as a whole of interactive developers and I haven't seen any solutions yet of this being done with something other than Flash. So I'm going to leave it open if anybody ever wants to show, send me some files, hey that's great. Uh, but for now I'm going to show you how this was built. And really this video could be called how to toggle the direction of a timeline max. So I'm going to very simply show you how we can have this sequenced animation play forwards and backwards with a very simple click of a button. So in the file that I gave you we had our peacock and inside the peacock there were a number of feathers. And when you first test this, style, this file out, um, those feathers are all going to be open because that's the way it is in the FLA. I'm going to jump over to my demo file now, and you'll see that when this file starts out, naturally all the feathers are open. You know, I wanted to start them closed and then have them open up. Uh, but since I have all these different feathers here, I'm going to want to animate them all at once. So tween max comes with a very handy method called all to, and there's also all from. So very quickly, I want to show you the code that I have so far. I'm importing all of the green sock plugins that I need to use tween light, tween max, and timeline light, and timeline max. I'm activating the scale plugin, so if I want to scale something proportionally, I can just set one property instead of two. So I'll say scale equals one instead of scale x equals one and scale y equals one. I'm creating an array to store all of my references to all my feathers. So now what I can do is loop through all of the feathers that are inside of Peacock MC and put them inside of this array. Now with tween max is all from and all to methods it allows us just to throw an array of items into a tween and then all those items will automatically tween. So we don't have to do any more loops or anything funky like that. So the basics of an all to tween would look like this. I'm going to say tween max dot all to and instead of putting in, again, the movie clip that I'm tweening, I'm going to pass in an array of movie clips. So that's feathers. All right. Again, that was populated by my loop here. And I'm going to say, you know what, why don't you just take um, 1.5 seconds and we're going to say, let's tween all of you to a rotation of zero. Okay. And by just doing that, let's put a little delay on this too, just so you can see. Delay, we'll say, is 0.5. So when the file starts out, the feathers are open, and then they close. So literally with one little tween piece of code here, I have all those feathers closing. All right, They all go to a rotation of zero, which is how they look when they're all pointing straight up. So what I'm going to do next, though, is do the reverse of that. I'm going to say all from, okay? And all from is cool because it takes all the feathers and it will now start them at a rotation of zero and it will tween them to where I have them laid out inside my FLA. So now we start out, everything's closed, and then they open up. All right, so just the opposite. We'll close that out. And in my example, we also had a little bit of scaling going on, okay? So I'm just going to copy and paste here really quick. At the same time that everything is opening up, I'm also having all the feathers uh, scale from a 0.2 value, okay? So using the scale plugin, I can just say scale instead of scale X and scale Y, and we have no easing at all on there. So now I have these two groups of tweens running at the same time, and you'll see now that the feathers shoot up, so they're scaling and then opening. And really, I can get rid of this delay now, okay? Now, what I want to be able to do for this challenge is be able to control this with a very simple click. Right now, there's nothing in there. So that's everything scaling while it's fanning out or opening up with two all from tweens. Well, if I want to control both of these tweens as one single unit, I'm going to put them into a timeline max. So I'm going to say var tl is going to be my timeline max equals new timeline max, there we go. And then for each of these tweens, I'm going to insert them into that TL timeline. So I'm going to say tl.insert multiple, and I'm going to pass in 
those tweens. Okay, so this puts both of these sets of tweens at the same position in that timeline max. Now we've done timeline max stuff a lot on this blog, so uh, I'll probably link up some resources for you to learn a little bit more, but now all of these tweens are enclosed inside of a parent timeline that controls them. Um, inside of my toggle bird button for now, I'm telling my peacock that it's button mode equals true, and when you click on the peacock, you're gonna toggle the bird. I'm just very quickly going to say tl.reverse, okay? So I'm gonna test my movie out, and you'll see that the timeline max plays by default. And now when I click on the peacock, it automatically tells that timeline to play backwards, okay? So that's the basics of the meet right there. Now to get the toggle to work is a little bit different, okay? If the bird is closed, I want it to open. If it's open, I want it to close. So we're gonna have to put a little bit of Boolean magic in here. The first thing I'm gonna do is tell my timeline max that when it starts out, it's gonna start out paused. So I'm gonna say paused is true. And just follow along here, I'm also gonna say reversed is going to be true also. All right, so I'm setting two properties in the timeline max constructor. So I'm saying start out paused and also start out with your direction going backwards. Whenever I click on the bird, I'm gonna say the TLs dot reversed property equals the opposite of the TLs reversed property. Okay, so if I'm starting out reversed, clicking the bird is gonna make it go forward, okay? And we've talked about this Boolean switch before and here at snorkel.tv we call it the switcheroo, okay? And then once I've switched things around, all I have to do is tell my TL to resume, all right? A lot of people who submitted entries here had conditional statements that said if the timeline is reversed, then switch it around and then tell the timeline to reverse or play, tell it to play. Um, that's all fine, but here we have two lines of code that will toggle the direction of a timeline max. So now it's closed. I click, it plays forward. I click again, and it reverses it. Click again, click again, and at any time I can toggle this um, timeline back and forth. Now, one little tricky thing that I put in there just as a bonus was that I wanted the timeline to play quicker in reverse. So what we did for that was I said that the TLs dot time scale property equals its reversed property plus one. So what does that mean? The time scale allows us to adjust the timing of a timeline. So a time scale of one is the natural speed of a timeline. If I say the time scale equals two, it's going to play twice as fast. If I say the time scale equals 0.5, it's going to play at half speed. So here, I'm saying, what is the reversed value, okay? If the timeline is reversed, that means that that value is true, which gives us a value of one. One plus one equals two, okay? If the timeline is not reversed, that means it's false, all right? False converted to an integer is zero. Zero plus one is one. So based on the reversed state of the timeline, I can also generate a time scale or a speed. I actually have a tutorial on converting booleans to numbers for this sort of trickery. Again, you could do this with a conditional statement, um, but here it just so happens that we can convert that boolean value of the reversed property to a integer and then base our time scale on that. So let's test this out. And now when I open, it takes 1.5 seconds to open, but when I close them, it goes in very quickly. So there we go, open, close. Um, it's subtle, but it is playing at double speed going backwards. So there you have a very simple toggle between the direction of sequenced animations. All right, click, boom, boom. And really, there's nothing at all difficult here. This stuff here, you know, I could have made a little bit more verbose, but it's compact and I love it. So this timeline here could have thousands of tweens in them and we can just control the direction of that timeline by switching around the reversed property and then having the tween resume. So there you have it guys. Thank you so much for all the submissions. I'm going through them right now. 
Um, I will hopefully announce the winners very soon. Thanks, guys.